Programming an ESP8266 module over Wi-Fi is a catch-22. You need to run an Arduino sketch capable of receiving code updates over Wi-Fi to upload your code over Wi-Fi. So before we can upload our code over Wi-Fi, we need to establish the USB serial connection. If you can already program your ESP board over the USB connection, then you can continue watching this tutorial. Otherwise, you should watch my other video about the serial connection first. In this tutorial, I will use the Node MCU, but it will also apply to the plain ESP12 E and F modules. I am going to use the Arduino OTA library. OTA means over the air, as in over the air programming. The library comes with the ESP8266 package, so there is no need to install it separately. If you followed my USB connection tutorial, then it should be already installed. I will start with the minimal code you need for wireless programming. While it is simple, you may easily get locked out of making future over the Wi-Fi updates if you change your Wi-Fi name or password. So, the next step will be to add a fallback to make it more reliable. You can find a link to the code in the description box below. We need to include the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library to connect to our Wi-Fi network and Arduino OTA to receive code updates. I have created a demo Wi-Fi network named ESP Tutorial with the password ESP Tutorial123. I am also setting up the serial connection for easier debugging. Of course, if you do it purely over Wi-Fi, then you can't see the information sent over the serial line. But it gives the option to use the Arduino terminal with the USB connection to read what is going on. Then we need to connect to our Wi-Fi and do the OTA setup. To connect to our local network, we need to switch the ESP module to the station mode, initialize the connection and uh, wait until the connection is established. The minimal setup for the over-the-air programming is to call the begin method. Optionally, you can tell the name of how it will show up in the Arduino IDE. We can also add a password to protect it from someone else reflashing our microcontroller. And finally, in the main loop we have to call the handle method to give the Arduino OTA library some processing time to handle incoming uh, reprogramming requests. Now comes the part where we need to use the USB connection, since at the moment the Node MCU module doesn't know how to connect to our Wi-Fi. We can see from the Arduino terminal that the ESP module has successfully connected to our local Wi-Fi network. And our module is now visible under the ports, network ports. If it doesn't show up, then try restarting Arduino IDE. If it still doesn't show up, then make sure that your computer is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the ESP module. I'll make the LED blink so it is more evident that our code was uploaded to the module. Note that you shouldn't use blocking functions like delay in the main loop. It steals time away from other processes like the Arduino OTA handle. For that reason, I am using a simple modulus operation over millis to determine if the LED should be on or off. The next step is to create a fallback access point in case the connection fails. But before we continue, if you find this video helpful, 
then please leave a like. Or if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Thank you. Then we can connect directly to the module. Unfortunately, as of January 2021, we can't reprogram the module while connected to the software access point created by the ESP module. It does show up in the network ports list, but it fails to upload midway through. But we can use the access point connection to reconfigure the Wi-Fi name and password. Now we are also using the EEPROM library to store the Wi-Fi name and password in the flash memory and the ESP8266 web server library to display the web-based Wi-Fi configuration form. These are the name, password, gateway IP and subnet mask for the fallback access point. I chose 10.1.1.1 since it still falls under the agreed local network range but is not likely to conflict your existing network. The next structure here is for storing the Wi-Fi name and password in the flash memory. I have added an extra byte to the end of the structure with the value 0. It ensures that I can use the name and password parameter safely as a z-string, even if the flash is not initialized yet. In the setup we read the current Wi-Fi configuration from flash, then try to connect to the Wi-Fi network. If it fails, then set up our own access point. After that, set up a web server to make Wi-Fi parameters configurable. And finally, initialize the OTA programming. Now let's go over the specific functions. I'll use the EEPROM library to read the first bytes from the flash into our Wi-Fi configuration structure. Then set the last byte to zero to ensure that the C-string is properly terminated if the flash memory was filled with garbage. When saving a new Wi-Fi configuration, I will write the entire structure to the flash byte by byte. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network is the same as with the minimal code example. The only difference is that we are using the name and password from the configuration structure and then return if the connection was successful or not. To create an access point, we set the mode to AP station, configure the IP and uh, subnet mask and then start the software access point with our access point name and password. After connection setup, we are preparing the configuration web page. First, we need to set the web request handler. This slash means that there is no soup path. We can use the IP address directly. If we add it here admin, for example, the browser's configuration path would be IP slash admin. The next step is to start the web server. Inside the request handler, if new SSID and password are submitted, then save those values to the flash. Then create the HTML response page for the web browser. If new values were saved, then display rebooting and restart the ESP module to apply the new settings. Otherwise, show the fields for entering a new network name and password. Now we can connect back to our local Wi-Fi network and reprogram the ESP module from the Arduino IDE. The biggest danger in all of it is that you accidentally upload a code that is not capable of receiving code updates. In that case, you need to connect the USB cable again. Thank you for watching.